You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call it season five and all those videos from 2020 that are all loaded on my YouTube channel, my handle on YouTube. YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view the old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day. And I know that will bless you exceedingly and very, very important while you're on my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And God bless you as you do now, Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. And that will give you a few scriptures from the Bible and a memory verse. And that helps you to understand understand the body of the text praise god so let's go straight into the daily devotional today is tuesday november the 5th tuesday november the 5th praise god hallelujah and today we are starting a two-day series titled harden not your heart harden not your heart praise god harden not your heart hmm. now the, the first person that comes to mind is pharaoh the Bible says, and you know, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, his heart was hardened. Even when he, God, showed ten he saw 10 miracles. There's not, and many people like that. He saw 10 times God sent plagues to Egypt. And the Bible says his heart was hardened. His heart was like stone. There are people like that, that even if they see, even if they were there, when Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, they still would not believe. Their heart is hardened, you know. And there are Christians like that. Yeah, I believe you know the people like that. Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. His heart is hardened. You know, Pharaoh, even after everything that happened, after the death of the firstborn, he still decided to chase the children of Israel until he got a watery burial. Praise God. Praise God. So you see, some people's hearts are hardened. Now the Bible tells us that the how do you so somebody with a hard heart, how do you do it? Number one, the word of God. The Bible says, not my word like fire, like a hammer. He breaketh the rock into pieces. So the word of God is like a hammer. It can break the rock into pieces. And you know, God was saying in the book of Ezekiel that um, he will put our his spirit within us and that he will move the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Okay, so people have a heart of stone. Harden not your heart. So we're going to be looking at part one today and then we'll conclude with part two tomorrow. Unbelief. You know, some people, they, even if they see the miracle, they still would not believe <laughs> you know uh, the, the the pharisees said um not just what our lord jesus christ was on the cross they said let him come down from the cross and we will believe that he's the messiah they saw him on the cross they saw the miracles that were happening they, they were there they saw most of the miracles yet their hearts were hardened so just christ called them a brood of vipers no, no that was john the baptist john called them a brood of vipers who told you to flee from the rot to come Mm. praise god so harden not your heart part one and our scriptural reading today is taken from the book of hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 to 11 hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 to 11 today i'm going to be reading from the new king james version the king james was a bit complex so <laughs> so uh, i read from this more modern translation the new king james version hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 to 11 and thus goes the reading of god's word therefore as the holy spirit says today if you would hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years therefore i was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their hearts they have not known my way so i swore in my road they shall not enter my rest oh Praise God. Don't let your heart be hardened. Don't let your heart be hardened. You see, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, his heart was so soft. So, so he saw, um, Philip came and told him that, ha, I have seen him of whom the prophets speak in the scripture, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> Philip laughed. He said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
Philip said, come and see. He took him to Jesus. And as he took him to Jesus, Jesus spoke a word of knowledge concerning him and said, Nathaniel, an Israelite without, a, a, an Israelite without guile, you know. And <laughs> he was saying, you know me. You know, and because of that, because of the way Jesus brought forth the words to him, immediately he said, you are the king of Israel. He said, you are the king of Israel. Ah, ah. Jesus Christ said, just because I said I saw you sitting under the tree, you have believed. He said, he said, you will see greater things. He believed immediately. There's some people that you preach the gospel to, you preach, 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 but until your mouth is dry. They, their heart is hardened. They don't want, they, they think that they are being clever now let's read this verse again yeah he says therefore as the holy spirit says today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart as in the rebellion as in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my work 40 years therefore i was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my way so i swore in my wrath that they would not enter into my rest. What is the Holy Spirit saying here? So he's saying that as you are hearing the word of God, you are in church, you are hearing the word of God, they are calling you that if you're not born again, come out. He says today, if you will hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't say, don't mind, church is a scam. Don't harden your heart. He says, and he's comparing, he said, don't harden your heart as in the rebellion, the rebellion in the wilderness. You know, in the day of the test, they were testing God. They, they, they were trying his patience. God who is long-suffering. God is long suffering. He's very, very, very slow to anger. He barely gets, he doesn't get angry. Very long suffering. So how he dealt with Israel. He, they, he suffered long. <laughs> but they tested God so much. Even with all the miracles they saw in the wilderness, they still did not believe God. He had brought water out from the rock for them. He fed them with manna from heaven. The Bible says angels food. But they hardened their heart as in they were rebellious. They are rebellious people. A rebellious people. The God said that they are stiff-necked people. And so they were testing God. They were trying his patience. He would give them instructions. They would, in fact, before Moses came down from the, that, from the mountain that made the golden calf, they were saying, these are your gods, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. They were testing him. He was, and then so because of that, God, he was, God was angry with them. And he swore that they would not enter that promised land. They would not enter into his rest. So if your heart, your heart is hardened, you are testing God as in the rebellion. God is knocking on the door of your heart every day. Today you are going out, you are meeting somebody who is preaching to you about Christ. Tomorrow you are going out, you are meeting somebody who is preaching about, to you about Christ. God is telling you this way you are going, you are not listening. <laughs> you are hardening your heart as in the rebellion. You, you can miss your place in heaven if you continue like that. Harden not your heart. The memory verse is taken from Psalm 95, verse 8. It says, Harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Praise God. God talks to his people. The only problem is that many do not listen to him. Excuse me. Psalm 95, verse 6 to 8 says that if you hear his voice, you should not harden your heart. If God has been talking to you and you have been disobedient, he will keep quiet and you won't hear him again. There's a way God is, oh. You know, if God gives you an instruction and you don't do it, that's it. You just keep quiet until you repent. If he tells you to do something and you do not do it, if you repent, he will forgive you. But if you if you if you harden your heart and you don't do it, you just keep quiet. You just you may not know, but you've not heard God from in about a year, two years. You know, he has withdrawn from you. You understand, and that's why David was just praying, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit on, away from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Harden not your heart. So God talks to His people, and we must learn to be obedient. You know, and and that's the prayer that God remove the heart of stone from me and give me a heart of flesh. We'll pray it later. So, and and, and the worst thing that can happen to anybody is when God doesn't speak. Yeah, you, I can't live without Him. I can't. I won't. I refuse to. You understand? I, I, I can't do without God. His voice, even his rebuke, is as excellent oil. Amen. Praise God. You need to hear God so that he can guide you. The primary way to hear God and be guided by his spirit is to study your Bible. However, what should you do when the situation you need guidance about is not specifically addressed in the Bible? Whenever you need to make decisions on such matters, you need to hear God directly. So that is the primary way. The main way that God guides his children is through the scriptures. Praise God. 
So the, as you see the scriptures, this is this, this is the living word of God. The Bible said uh, the, the word of God is quick and powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to divide us under the soul and the spirit, up to the bones and the marrow, and is the center of the intents and the thoughts of the heart. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is alive, it's a living thing. Mm. So when you read it, as you study the word of God, don't worry, just start reading. The spirit of God will catch up with you as you start. And it says you are consistent. And you begin to teach you through the word. Keep reading. The more you read, you are, the Bible says we are transformed. As we behold in a glass, uh, for, we are chained from one level of glory to another. The Bible says that we are, we, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. You understand? So the, the scriptures are alive. It's a living thing. As you begin to study, even if it is one chapter a day, be consistent. Your spirit, you will be changed from inside out. Amen. And so God speaks to us directly through the word of God. But there are some situations that you are going through. Like, Lord, should I go to Ibadan or should I go to this place? What university should I go to? Who should I marry? Should I marry John or should I marry David? <laughs> Praise God. Should I marry? Uh, uh, should you marry uh, Lillian or should you marry Tokumbo? <laughs> you know, so those are not expressly in the Bible, and God will speak to you. So, you know, but He, He, you need to hear that Him directly. And God speaks. He that created the mouth shall not, not cancel the nations. You know, so God speaks. The Bible says He will guide us with His counsel and afterwards receive us up into glory. Sometimes you can be asking God a question and He doesn't answer you because the answer is near you there. It's within your gift. You can deal with this. You are just disturbing him. And sometimes you have to, he wants you to wait. He wants you to tarry in his presence. You know, God is God. He's a, our father who is in heaven. He's, he's daddy, daddy. Praise God. There are times when you can clearly see what God wants you to do in the scriptures. However, you still need to hear him, hear from him on how to go about what he wants you to do. For example, when Paul wanted to go to Asia in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 7, the Spirit of God forbade him. You might ask, how can the Spirit of God stop Paul from going to preach? Since it is written in Matthew 28, 19, that we should go into all the world and teach every nation. So God, in some situations, is very, very specific. You understand? So like God said, we should go into the world, we should preach the gospel to every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as Paul was, and, and that's an instruction that all Christians should go out and evangelize. And so Paul wanted to go and evangelize a particular Asian nation. And the Lord, the Bible said the Spirit forbade him. The Spirit forbade him. Uh, but meanwhile, it is the will of God that we preach the gospel. But God was saying to Paul, don't go there. He wanted, he wanted to enter Bithynia, and the Lord, the Spirit of God forbade them again and turned them elsewhere. Do you understand? So there are some specific times that God will speak. Um, um, you know, speak something to you. I remember, um, and God, he's a very present help in time of trouble. So I just started driving and I put on the sat nav, that then we used to call it Tom Tom. <laughs> so I put it on and I began to drive. And then I, the, the woman didn't speak again. And I began to panic because, you know, I was on, um, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I began to panic. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if you do not hear the sat nav speak, keep going straight. If you don't hear the voice, keep going straight. I, I, I didn't know that. You know, I, I didn't know. So, but I was just in the car and he spoke to me at that point. And that was the direction I needed. And yes, every day he speaks to, you know, God speaks to us every day. He guides us with his counsel every day. Amen. And there's some things that you don't, God doesn't need to speak because they're already in the word, but there are some specific instructions that God needs to give you to your specific assignment. You understand? To specific situations that are not in the Bible and then we we'll need God to speak and we'll ask. When we ask, he will answer. He's a prayer answering God. He's also a question answering God. Some years ago, Daddy said, I wanted to hold a crusade in Benin, a state capital in southern Nigeria. We had prepared everything for the crusade. But to my surprise, when I went to ask God about it, he said we should go to Ede, a town in southwest Nigeria instead. <clears throat> Praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. I told him we had just concluded the crusade in Elisha another town in the same state as Ede, and that the inhabitants of Ede would have most likely been in attendance. However, since God is my commander-in-chief, I obeyed him. Now, this is the part of, about God that we need to learn. You see, we, we need to understand how God is. Amen. We need to understand how God is. And that's yesterday. I loved when Daddy was saying that, Pa Elton said that God, God does whatever he pleases. 
And all that I, you have to do is to take your burdens to him, pray about it, and go and sleep. He does, God does whatever he pleases, sitting upon the circles of the earth. Amen. You can't force God to talk. He's a king spirit. He will talk when he wants to talk. And you can't arrest him. Praise God. He's God Almighty. So we have to understand his ways. God made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. So you see, this that is giving a testimony here. And this is this is how God is. He won't speak to you unless you ask. Sometimes, most of the time he will speak. Sometimes you won't even ask him anything and he will speak. And sometimes you have to ask. And that's one thing that David always did. He always inquired of the Lord. And there's sometimes that God will just speak to you out of the blue. You're not even, you're not, you're just doing your own thing and God just spoke. Praise God. His eyes are always upon us. His eyes run to and fro the earth that he may make himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. God is good and kind. What a good, kind God. Hallelujah. So that is saying that some years ago, we wanted to go and hold a crusade in Benin City. I'm from Benin City, by the way, in south southwestern Nigeria. And um, he decided that, oh, let me ask the Lord that they wanted to hold a crusade. It, that's a very good thing to go and hold a crusade somewhere. So he went to ask the Lord that Lord want to hold a crusade in Benin. And the Lord said, don't go to Benin, go to Ede, a town in southwestern, another town. So which, you see, God's ways are, his, his, they are past finding out. And then he said, but we went to Elisha, which is just next to Ede recently to hold a crusade. And I'm sure that he said, he was telling God, I'm sure that um, the people from Ede must have attended that crusade. But God said, you should go to Ede. So he went to Ede. Do you understand? You see, so you see the way God thinks, his, his thoughts are far above our thoughts. So one day I was just, um, I, I, so I, do you understand? And, and God, he didn't expect God to say that, you know. But God's God, he's, he's amazing. I remember one time he gave, um, David wanted to go and fight some people. So he inquired of the Lord, you know, and um, God said, do it this way. And he went ahead and did it this way. And then he wanted to fight those people again. And so he said, Lord, should I go the same way I did? God said, no, 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 no. Come against them from them. When you hear, go do this, stay there, stay under the mulberry trees. As soon as you hear the going in the mulberry trees, then you are said, you, you move forward. So just because God has said you should do something this way this time, doesn't mean you're going to do it that way the next time. Okay. So this was, uh, uh, I was, um, I can't remember what I was giving this testimony here. Yeah, I think I was telling somebody, yeah. So I um, I started sharing the Open Heavens in 2020. And in 2021, I remember it was March. I was just doing something around my house. Because what God would do normally is um, um, would share the Open Heavens this month, leave one month gap, share again. That was the formula he gave us. So we're sharing six months of the year. So we share maybe in March, um, prepare for, in April, we'll begin to pre prepare for May. In May, we, in April and uh, June, we prepare for July. You understand? So we're always leaving one month gap. That's the formula that God gave us. And that's the formula that I applied from 2020, 2021, and in 2022 as well. Now, in 2022, March of 2022, I was just walking around my house and the Holy Spirit said, I wasn't praying or anything. I was just doing my thing. The Holy Spirit said, in 2020, no, this was 2021. So in March 2021, he said, as I was just walking around my eyes, he said in, he said in 2022, this is where in March 2021, in 2022, you're going to share the open heavens from June to December. <laughs> That's a year away. Praise God. So you see, sometimes you, you need to ask God, you need to inquire of God. Sometimes you need to really inquire of God. You may need to pray and fast and inquire. And sometimes he will come and tell you himself what he wants you to do without you even asking. Or he won't say anything and expect you to ask. You know, and that's what that's what daddy daddy just asked him. I said, Oh, we're going to Benin. Well, that's why that's why the Bible says we should commit our works into the hands of the Lord and trust in him and we'll bring it to pass. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. The Bible says in all our ways we should acknowledge him and he direct our paths. During the crusade in Ede, Daddy says, the king was in attendance and when he got on the stage to speak he announced that we, he will be gifting the church with whatever quantity of land we desired we decided to ask for 50 acres of land however when i went back to hear from the lord he told me to ask for 500 acres and i obeyed today the portion of land is where the redeemers university and the redeemed christian church of 
Redeem Christian School of Missions are situated. If I had had in my heart, I wouldn't have gone to Ede and I wouldn't have received the blessing. Don't harden your heart. When God says, do it this way. Whatever, Moses, Mary, our mother, she told us, she said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do you understand? Because you don't, we don't know. May God help us to always be obedient in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may God help us to do all that is in his heart and in his mind. Um, David said in Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart, O God, renew a steadfast and a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Uphold me with your free spirit. Another translation says, make me willing to obey. Amen. And in the New Testament, Philippians, I think it says work, that God is at work in us mightily, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. So that he says that, you see that, that if, if when he went to Eder, you know, and he had, they had finished the crusade, you know, because wherever Jesus Christ is, light comes. Amen. So when they went to that village in Eder and they preached the gospel, the king came on the altar and said that he had decided that he was going to gift land to the church, any amount that they wanted. So they thought, wow, 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 50 acres of land. That's a lot. So, but he went to ask God and the Holy Spirit said, not 50 acres, but 500 hectares. You'd be like, God, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Isn't he amazing? And that's where they built the Redeemed Christian Church of God University and the Mission Center. Amen. Praise God. Beloved, when we are dealing with God, don't harden your heart. Listen to him with an open mind. Be committed to obeying him and he will speak to you. Like if you're asking God, um, there are two men in your life, which one is your life partner? What that is saying that open your up, listen to him with an open mind. It means that don't don't think God searched the heart, not what is the mind of the spirit. Don't have what you are going to do in your mind, but just to tick all the boxes, you're not going to say, God. You know, God will answer you according to the idol in your heart. So if you have sister, a sister Lillian and sister Tokumbo that you like, both of them, you don't know which one is your wife. Inside your heart, you want sister Tokumbo. You have decided that it's sister Tokumbo you're going to marry. Whether you respect, you're just going to ask God that God, though, you know, these two women, which one do you want? If you have decided in, your, in the corner of your heart that you like sister Tokumbo, God will answer you according to the idol that is in your heart. So that is says we should always go to God with an open mind. And you see, I think this is where we, we must speak to God how we feel. You know, speak to God how we feel. And say, Lord, I really like Sister Tokumbo. I like her. This She's beautiful. She's nice. She's very kind. She treats me very well. But you are the one that knows the heart. I really like Tokumbo. But whew, let your will be done. What do you want? What do you say? If you say I should not marry, you understand, be open with God. That way you're bringing out your heart. God is removing the, God sees your heart that you're, you want, you are willing to lay aside your will for his will. That's what Jesus Christ did. He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, let it, if it's possible, let it pass from me if it's possible. But if it's not, let your will be done. You see, he was telling God his own will, but that he was willing to put his will under the control of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So have an open mind. Do harden not your heart. That's in the day of provocation. Key point. If your heart is hardened, God will not speak to you. And if he speaks to you, he speaks to you according to the idol of your heart. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We glorify you, Heavenly Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you. You are the best. There is none. You are better than the best. You are greater than the greatest. There is none like you. Thank you for your everlasting love. Father, I pray that every deafness in our ears be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to hear your glorious voice in the mighty name of Jesus. Walk inside us mightily, but to will and to do of your good pleasure. Help us to do all that is in your heart and in your mind all the days of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Make us willing and obedient so that we can eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus. Help us to decrease but let Christ increase in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. I've gone way over my time again. Thank you for listening to me. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sister Tayo. And God bless you. See you tomorrow.